What if the biggest weapon in war isn't a missile, but a camera? This isn't science fiction. This is the true story of a small, simple drone that changed everything. It didn't carry bombs. It didn't fly fast. Its only job was to watch. And because it watched, it saved a nation and built an empire. This is how the little-known Tataran Mastiff drone made Israel the world leader in drone technology, a title it still holds today. Before drones, seeing the enemy was a deadly game. Armies had to send out soldiers on foot. They had to send pilots in expensive jets over dangerous skies. They took photos and came back. By the time those pictures were developed and studied, the information was old. The enemy had already moved. It was like trying to win a football game while only looking at last week's playbook. For a country like Israel, this was more than just a problem. It was a nightmare. Israel is a small country. For decades, it has been surrounded by larger, hostile forces. Every soldier's life is precious. Every piece of land is critical. They could not afford to be surprised. They could not afford to make blind guesses. They needed to see their enemies clearly, in real time, without losing a single person. This desperate need for perfect vision is what pushed Israeli engineers to invent a new kind of eye in the sky. The idea was radical for the 1970s. What if we took the pilot out of the plane? What if we built a small, cheap, remote-controlled aircraft with a camera on it? To many big military powers like the US and Russia, this seemed like a toy. It was not serious. But for Israel, it was a matter of survival. They were not building a toy. They were building a lifeline. A company called Tatarin, famous for radios and electronics, got the job. Their creation was called the Mastiff. Picture this, a drone made of fiberglass with a wingspan about as wide as a small car. It had a little propeller engine. It was launched from a truck using a catapult system, like a giant slingshot. It looked basic, almost crude, but inside it carried something revolutionary, a television camera. This camera could send a live video signal back to a truck on the ground, miles away from the danger. For the first time in history, a military commander could sit safely behind his own lines and look through a camera flying over enemy territory. He could see troops moving. He could see tanks gathering. He could see it all as it happened. This was the magic of the Mastiff. It turned time-delayed photographs into a live television broadcast of the battlefield. The real test came in war. In the early 1980s, Israel was involved in major conflicts in Lebanon. This was the moment of truth. Could this fragile-looking machine survive real anti-aircraft fire? Could its video signal stay clear when it mattered most? The Israeli army sent the Mastiff up. What the commanders saw on their screens changed warfare forever. They watched enemy forces in real time. They saw anti-aircraft missile batteries being set up. They watched convoys moving on roads. They had a God's eye view of the entire fight. This live information gave them an unbelievable advantage. Let me give you an example. Before the Mastiff, if you wanted to attack an enemy position, you sent scouts. The scouts might come back hours later with a report. You'd plan the attack based on that old information. By the time your jets arrived, the enemy might be gone, or worse, waiting in ambush. With the Mastiff, it was different. A commander could see the enemy right now. He could call in an airstrike and watch the jet fly in on his screen. He could see the bomb hit the target. Then he could immediately look for the next target, all in the same flight. It made Israeli attacks faster, more accurate, and far more deadly to their enemies. The Mastiff didn't drop a single bomb, but it made every Israeli bomb count. The psychological effect was just as powerful. Enemy soldiers started to feel something strange, the constant feeling of being watched. They never knew when that quiet buzzing sound was above them. They never knew if their every move was being seen. This constant surveillance broke their morale. It made them afraid to move, to gather, to plan. The Mastiff was not just a camera, it was a tool of fear and control. The success of the Mastiff taught Israel a fundamental new lesson about modern war. They realized that information is more powerful than bullets. Knowing exactly where the enemy is, what he is doing, and what he plans to do next is the greatest advantage you can have. This idea is called information dominance. The Mastiff gave Israel dominance. It meant they could use their smaller military with incredible efficiency. They didn't need to blast a whole area with artillery hoping to hit something. They could send one precise missile 
pixel to one exact spot because they saw the target with perfect clarity. This saved Israeli lives, saved ammunition, and won battles. This lesson became the heart of Israeli military strategy. They stopped thinking of drones as just scouts. They started thinking of them as the central nervous system of their entire army. The Mastiff would talk to the fighter jets, it would talk to the tank commanders, it would talk to the generals in headquarters. Everyone was looking at the same live picture. This is what we now call network-centric warfare, and Israel was the first to truly master it because of a simple, unarmed drone. With the Mastiff proving the concept, Israel dove headfirst into the drone business. They didn't just make more Mastiffs, they started building better ones. They asked, what if it could fly longer? What if the camera could see at night? What if it could carry more than just a camera? This drive led to the next generation, drones like the Scout and the Pioneer. These were more robust, more reliable. Then came the big ones, like the Heron, a giant drone that could stay in the air for over a day, watching an entire country. Israel Israel was no longer just a user of drones, it was becoming the world's factory of drones. While Israel was building and flying drones every day in real combat, other nations were still stuck in the old way of thinking. The United States, for example, saw drones mainly as high-altitude spy planes or as targets for anti-aircraft practice. They didn't see the revolutionary potential for real-time battlefield vision. Israel's years of combat experience became a secret weapon. Their engineers weren't just theorists. They were getting direct feedback from soldiers who used drones in life-or-death situations. This meant every new Israeli drone was built with practical, hard-won knowledge that no other country had. Soon, the world started to notice. During the 1982 Lebanon War, the world got a glimpse. Then, in 1991, during the Gulf War, the United States Marines used Israeli-made Pioneer drones. Video from these drones was broadcast on CNN, showing the world this amazing new technology. Suddenly, every military on the planet wanted what Israel had. They wanted the eyes that Israel had invented. Israel began to export its drones and its knowledge. Countries across Europe, Asia, and South America bought Israeli drones. More importantly, they bought the Israeli way of thinking. They learned that to win a modern war, you must first win the information war. You must see first. This made Israel not just a seller of equipment, but a global teacher of modern warfare. The small, humble Mastiff had created a multi-billion dollar industry and positioned a tiny country as the undisputed global superpower of unmanned technology. The impact of this goes far beyond the battlefield. The drone mentality of seeing everything, of gathering endless data, of making decisions based on live feeds, seeped into Israel's entire security mindset. It led them to become leaders in other intelligence fields. If you can watch from the sky, why not watch in cyberspace? Israel's famous expertise in cybersecurity and cyber warfare is a direct descendant of the principles learned from the Mastiff. It's all about collecting information, analyzing it instantly, and acting on it before your enemy knows what happened. This story is about more than just engineering. It's about a mindset. Israel was forced to innovate because it had no other choice. It could not match its enemies in size, so it had to beat them in smarts. It could not afford to lose soldiers, so it built machines to take the risk. The Mastiff was born from necessity, but it flourished because of vision. Israel saw the future of war, and it was unmanned, networked, and driven by data. Today, when you see news about a drone strike or see a drone delivering a package, you are seeing the legacy of the Mastiff. Modern drones are sleek, silent, and packed with sensors. They can shoot missiles, spot terrorists from 20,000 feet, or even dogfight other drones. But underneath all that advanced technology, the core idea remains the same. Remove the human from the most dangerous spot and extend our vision further than ever before. The Mastiff is now in a museum. It looks old and simple next to today's robots, but its influence is in every drone that flies. It proved a simple, powerful truth. In the modern world, the side that sees the most, sees the clearest, and sees it first, holds the real power. Israel built the first tool to give itself that power, and in doing so, it rewrote the rules of engagement for the entire world. The story of the Tadiran Mastiff teaches us that the greatest breakthroughs often come from solving the most desperate problems. 
it shows that a small, focused idea can grow into a world-changing force. For Israel, this little drone was more than just a piece of technology. It was the key to security, the seed of an industry, and the proof that thinking differently is the most powerful weapon of all. If you found this journey from a simple idea to a global revolution fascinating, please show your support. Hit the like button for this video. It really helps us at Wartex Zone to keep telling these important stories. Make sure to subscribe and tap the notification bell so you never miss a deep dive into the technology that shapes our world. Now we want to hear from you. What other piece of hidden or forgotten technology do you think changed history? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.